stirring the coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, coffee. Nice. Ethiopian. Never delay kissing a pretty girl or opening a bottle of whiskey. Ernest Hemingway. Maybe that was one of his problems. Maybe the bottle of whiskey was the thing that just made him kiss a pretty girl. Randomly. Make sure that, well, I guess in this day and age, you need consent. 100% consent. If you're going to kiss a pretty girl, you need to make sure that she's not threatened, that you don't do it where she's cornered. Because six months later, you don't want to get accused of kissing a pretty girl. That's called assault these days. Isn't it weird? You know, liberals got to ruin everything. Feminism has to ruin everything. <laughs> George Harrison wrote the Beatles song, Something in the Way She Moves. You like that song? Beautiful song. Something in the way she moves attracts me like no other lover. He wrote that in 1969 about his wife. Commenting simply on the way she moves. It was like no other, according to him. That's beautiful. Think about the woman in your life. You can say something about the way she cooks, or something about the way she sleeps, something about the way she touches me, something about the way, whatever, just fill in the blank. And that was cool. And it's okay to be mesmerized by a trait of your woman. But here's the catch. Don't let your life be mesmerized. Don't let your masculinity be mesmerized. Don't let your manhood be mesmerized. There are some men that just live mesmerized about the feminine mystique, that they're unknowable, that they're magic. <laughs> Tell that to the guy who just went through divorce court or a custody battle. Yeah, there's something in the way she moves, but I will tell you this. If you stand your ground, you can love while your feet are firmly planted on the ground. Just don't leave the ground. It's perfectly okay. As a matter of fact, the minute your feet leave the ground, your woman will have less respect for you. She's hoping that you're going to remain firm and be the rock and not have to ask her permission for anything. Don't be a dick about it. Be considerate. As I heard someone say once, it's okay to have a woman be part of your plan, but not have her be the plan. And that's tough to backpedal on that, especially if you've been married a while. Maybe slowly you can get your balls back. I don't know. A lot of guys out there, tough guys, big guys, guys with deep voices and tattoos, guys who seem firm are really pussies when it comes to their women. I know I talk to enough of them. In the old days, a guy would say, you're being way too much of a pussy, dude. Guys don't tell guys that anymore, do they? Friends don't let their male friends don't let their male friends be pussies strengthen up. You can't even use that language anymore because your male friend will be offended by it. Imagine that. Imagine if you have some words of truth for a friend. I guarantee you, you are the only person in that guy's life telling him those things. Guarantee it. Don't be afraid to speak the truth. The truth is going to make some guys uncomfortable. It's almost as if they don't know the power and the life that they could have if they stop relinquishing their balls to their woman. It's a topic for another time. A man writes me this question, and I'll be as anonymous as possible. My woman is a hairdresser, 
I can see why he wrote me this because I work in a salon. My woman is a hairdresser and has a large percentage of male clients. They want her now to go to their homes for haircuts. What should I do? Dude, dude, dude. Number one, she's not going to ask you for your permission. If you've gotten to the point where you have to ask your wife for permission to do anything, you might need to get your balls back. So, here's the answer. I'm not a huge fan of women visiting men in their homes, single or married, for common sense reasons, for sexual temptation reasons, and if she pushes that issue with her with you it's going to lead to other issues right now during lockdown for the you know what hair cutting professionals aren't supposed to go to other people's homes not just so you won't get something but so that you're not bringing anything into their home that's just that's just the way it is right now comment however you want I don't care the other thing is this a man can wait for a haircut. Slick your hair back. It's okay. Use a little product. You know, you can put off put off getting a haircut for a month or two. Or even three if you slick your hair back or use a little more product. Seriously. Why do you want a woman, first of all, men, why do you want a woman coming to your home? Fulfill a little hairdresser fantasy? and hairdresser women. Why would you want to go to a man's home? But he's married. Doesn't matter. But his girlfriend is right there. Doesn't matter. Ladies, figure out another way to make money. Men, stop inviting women to your home to cut your hair. Stop it. Enough already with that. So my answer is no. Not a fan of it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't want to say I wouldn't allow her to do it because that sounds like you have a slave as a girlfriend, fiance, or a wife. And that's, that's the last thing that you want to be talking like, is like a slave master. But have a talk. It's just not right for a woman to go to a man's home. Period. It opens the door for too much temptation and uh, wandering of the mind and wandering of the penis. Enough already. Enough of the restless heart and restless penis. This is the year that I say goodbye to a pair of boat shoes, moccasins, camp mocks. This is the second pair that I've had for 20 years. However, they don't make them anymore. And I'm looking for a new high-end pair, possibly handmade. I was looking at the Sibago Sperry L.L. Bean uh, even, possibly even custom. I actually have them on right now. I'll show you. 20 years I've had these. 20 years. I don't wear them for much except just inside the house or if I go on a trip somewhere. You've seen these a million times. Things like this. They're just getting to that point where I used to be able to wear them like with a pair of jeans. Out and about. Now they're just kind of dedicated to just being indoor shoes or if I have to take the trash out or go get the mail or something like that. Some people recommended SAS. Some people recommended Eastland. I forget what some other brands were. But I was looking at prices anywhere from, as I was surfing the web, from <clears throat> like 150 bucks all the way up to the handmade in Maine Sperry, like real high end, they were like 374. Custom made, one at a time, by a person sewing them. Thick leather. They look like the last 20 years, but here I am in my 60th year, so that means for me, they're going to last me till I'm 80. So they, and I do plan on living to past 100, so the next pair is going to be last me till I'm 80. And I've got, I got these when I was 40. Isn't that funny? So what do you recommend? Some people recommended rock ports. When you get older and you have money or are more, what's the word? Not that I have money, 
It's just that the money that I spend, I have money to spend on quality things. That doesn't make me rich. Like I said, I was, what, about six months ago, looking for my last pair of boots. Like, Western kind of boots. Will I get another bike? I don't know. I like the, the bike that I've, ha I've gotten. is 15 years old, and I love it. Will I get another bike? I don't know. This one is so, so nice. It's almost like new. There's certain things that I have. Like I have a microfiber sport coat that I just don't see myself ever getting rid of. My entire life, I remember up until my grand, when my grandfather died, I remember he had a tweed coat. Like a tweed sport coat. Sure, they are super expensive. But it was around his entire life, his entire adult life, he had this sport coat. He wasn't a man that was so interested in fashion. I mean, some of my favorite things are old things. You know, I have a fedora from the 50s that I love. I just need to block it, get the shape back into it again. But I love the thing. It's over 60 years old. I have a 75-year-old beaver overcoat that I love. I know it's over 75 years old because my grandfather got it when, when he first got married. But I'm now looking at a pair of boat shoes, camp mocks, that kind of thing. And I just want to get the best that I can get, something that's going to last more than 10 years, that's well made, and money is not an issue. Do you have anything like that, and what do you suggest? I'm leaning towards a couple different brands. There's no doubt that liberals view a pandemic in a different light. Facebook is the usual shit show of fake outrage, virtue signaling, and fake compassion. 100% of it is manufactured. Liberal men, of course, don't dare disagree with their wife or girlfriend online. Liberal men are the most feminized creatures on this earth. They're actually, liberal men are more feminine than women. Conservative, strong, Godly women could kick the shit out of the average liberal man. You know, I'm talking about the woman who's like proud to be a wife, a mother, a patriot, like those kind of women could probably smack around the average liberal man. And they're just weak in so many ways. I don't care. Muscles, tattoos, it matters not. Man buns matters not. Beards matters not. Take notes on who you see being strong right now. Just take mental notes. Because when this goes away, if it does, you want to build your army of strong people and eliminate the weaklings and the virtue signalers. All I ever wanted, all I ever needed is here in my arms. Words are very unnecessary. They can only do harm. Depeche Mode, 1989. Gun sales are up, crime rates are down. Huh? Scratch my head. It's almost like guns aren't even the issue now, are they? Hmm. Duh. Does it seem like some people are addicted to doing things the hard way? Everything's got to be the hard way. They take the long way around. Somehow, some way, they just take the hard way. You know some people like that? And it kind of, it's tiring watching them. It's tiring watching their excuses. It's tiring rescuing them. And they'll always, there's always rescuers around, always. There's always people that make a living out of rescuing people who have taken the hard way. Don't be one of those people. Just be able to say goodbye. One of the best things you can do is learn how to say bye-bye or do some social distancing from people who make bad decisions. There you go, you learned how to distance yourself in the past two months with social distancing. Now do it. How about doing some mental and emotional distancing? You'll gain a lot from doing that. My bi-weekly paycheck is, the, is my thank you for all you do sign. These people holding up signs at hospitals, thanking doctors and nurses. I know a nurse right now that's making $166 an hour doing double time. Would she be doing that if she wasn't making that kind of money? 
we talked about the hero thing yesterday. Doctors and nurses are not heroes. You're not a hero if you get paid to do something. Sorry. Say what you want. You're not a hero. Your paycheck is your thank you. Why did I leave the Instagram beard world or the beardstagram world? Because 75% of the dudes look like they're advertising for their next boyfriend there. And you thought women were bad with their virtue signaling? When I had the big beard, I should just go back because I've saved every email that I've ever gotten. I should count the number of emails that I got from gay dudes saying, are you into dudes? Just some guys come right out, are you into men? And I just cannot believe the amount of bearded guys that use Instagram and social media as a dating site. Don't doubt me on that. And with that, finish your coffee. And I'll see you tomorrow on the Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason.